exciting topic. I don't need to do any proper introduction. Just game development should just sell itself. So thank you, uh, Radomir, for presenting. And uh, you, thank you. Okay. And uh, I'm going to talk about you about, uh, you know, being a full stack developer, a full stack game developer, where you start by making your hardware and then you also make the, the games. So uh, why Circuit Python? What is Circuit Python? Circuit Python is a fork of MicroPython. MicroPython is a special uh, subset of Python uh, that runs on microcontrollers. What are microcontrollers? Those are those tiny chips that uh, basically are whole computers uh, that you can find in your watch, in your alarm clock, in your coffee machine, uh, practically everywhere. Those are very cheap. Usually they are very limited. And uh, until recently, they were mostly programmed in assembly or in C. And uh, until MicroPython came along, that lets you run your, well, run Python code on them, more or less. And uh, then CircuitPython came along, which is a version of MicroPython that is uh, more geared toward beginners. The difference is uh, MicroPython was originally uh, developed for industrial use and for uh, professional use, and it tries to squeeze as much as possible from, from the hardware on which it runs, uh, which makes it sometimes difficult to, to understand. And uh, CircuitPython was forked from MicroPython by the Adafruit, uh, that's a U.S. company that uh, sells uh, those Arduino-like electronic things, and they wanted for people to be able to program them easily with Python. So they focused on on ease of use and on simplicity instead of of uh, you know giving you access to everything that there is. However. The project itself is a community project. It's an open source project, and it's actually much easier to get your code merged into CircuitPython than it is to, into MicroPython, which is uh, one reason why, why I choose it. Another one is, of course, I'm, I'm mostly teaching with those devices, so, so I want something that is easier to teach. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about two game libraries in particular, and uh, two families of, of devices that come with them. Uh, those are the libraries I wrote myself, so <laughs> that's why I, I, I was biased when I picked them. There is also a third library you can use in CircuitPython, the one that is default for all graphics in there, uh, called Display.io. And uh, that library is a bit, a little bit lower than the libraries I'm showing. That, that's why I prefer to use the libraries, the, the pew, pew and the stage library, uh, because they are dedicated to making games and uh, uh, they have their limitations. They are much less uh, versatile than Display.io, but they are a bit faster, so you can uh, make the games uh, nicer. So we will start with pew, pew. Uh, Pupu came from a particular need. I needed something, well, I was running workshops for people, t teaching people Python by, by programming games. But uh, if you ever tried to write a computer game with Python, you probably tried it with Pygame. And, uh, you know, presuming to install Python. Everybody, like, you have 20 people coming to your workshop with different laptops. That one has Windows XP, that one, one has Windows 11, that one has the newest version of the MacBook that doesn't work with anything and doesn't, can't even connect USB to it. <laughs> so so uh, you spend half an hour of your workshop just installing things. And once you finish with the workshop and everybody has written their game, they can't even send that game to a friend to show them, hey, I, I wrote a game, you can play it. Because then the friend has to install everything on their computer just to try it. Right? So, so that's not 
perfect. So I, I came up with, uh, with the idea of what if I had a game console that you just connect to your computer. Let me show it. Close. So you have something like this. It was uh, not Informatica, that's uh, for a Polish conference. But uh, I made a, a lot of versions. If you were to battle two years ago, three years ago, on, in EuroPython conference, you probably have this as a badge. That's also a PewPew -Pew device. So uh, the idea is you connect the thing to your computer using USB cable, and it comes up as a USB drive. And you can see all the files in here, and you can just use any text editor to edit. And uh, as soon as you uh, save, it restarts. So it's very fast to try things. You just write some code, save it, and see what happens. Try code, save it, see what happens. You don't have to install anything on your computer. That's very convenient. The problem is uh, with, with, this, with those devices that only have uh, LEDs for display, you can see the error messages. So it's actually recommended to have a serial terminal uh, program installed to have access to the serial console so you can see the errors in your code. Uh, but uh, that doesn't apply to the ones that have a display because they will display the error on the screen. So that's, uh, that doesn't have to be this way. Uh, so this, uh, pew -pew, those pew, pew devices also were designed to be as cheap as possible. That's why they don't even have a display. They have a LED matrix. And uh, the latest version... Uh, doesn't even have buttons, it has touch buttons. And uh, even the battery holder is made out of PCB. So uh, I, I managed to get them below $10 a piece this way. So when you, when you are doing workshops and you need, you know, 20 of them, you can easily, pretty easily get that and, and uh, let people take them with them uh, home. Okay. Uh, I, I'm planning to do live coding with, to show you how, how easy it is, but I want to do it on the more advanced device. Uh, just connect the USB here. So uh, that's all about PewPew. Pew. You can, of, of course, you can uh, find it on read the docs. The documentation is all there. And the uh, like usage page, the, the, the documentation for the library itself that you use is one page of A4. So it's really not that much to, to read. And there are a lot of games, uh, like examples that you can uh, base your own games on. There is, of course, Snake. There is Tetris. There is Sokoban. Uh, there is Reversi. Uh, that wasn't even written by me. That, uh, the, we, have, we have a community of people. Uh, Chris, Christian Walter even wrote a, a ray tracing 3D game. It turns out ray tracing is pretty simple if you only have eight columns of pixels. <laughs> <laughs> so it works it's it's really you can you can explore the labyrinth that's so that's that so the the rest of the of the presentation i'm going to try and uh, show you how to make a, a more advanced game with graphics so we have this oh by the way you can you can use circuit uh, you can do all this stuff I'm showing you uh, with a variety of, of different devices. Not all of them uh, are made by Adafruit. Of course, Adafruit started with this, so they, they have a head start. But uh, CircuitPython actually runs on a, a lot of different devices. It doesn't necessarily come pre-installed on them. Sometimes you have to install it yourself, but uh, 
pretty much anything that has a screen and buttons uh, and runs circuit Python, you will be able to to make games like this. I'm going to show you. Uh, whoops. Like this. So this is uh, my collection of sharpen, sharpen, focus. No, no focus. So yeah, this is my collection of, of different game consoles. All of them run circuit Python. Some of them are really nice. For instance, this is Pymoroni uh, Pyco system running the RP2040. This is alumin this machined aluminum. And uh, yes, you have like space invaders. <laughs> And uh, on the junkier side, for instance, this is the uh, pie batch by Adafruit. And uh, this is uh, one I made myself. And also the one I'm going to uh, be showing you is the one I made recently. Those designs are open source. They're all uh, published. And... Uh, I hope to find someone who will be selling them as well. You can you can buy those pew pew devices online at mycarefabs.com. They cost ten dollars a piece, uh, but I'm I'm hoping I will be able to also uh, find someone who will produce and sell uh, those devices. Uh, this is also RP2040, and uh, uh, as you can see, it has nice large display, so we will be using uh, this one. So, how it works. As you saw previously, it mounts as a, as a uh, USB drive, and by default, it will execute this main.py file. Uh, and uh, that file actually contains the menu that you are see displayed here. So this this menu program uh, that lets you select uh, from the uh, from the files that are here is actually the main PUI. However, if we create a code.py file. then it will get executed instead of main.py. We can see that uh, we no longer have the menu. We, we can see the Python console. And uh, because the, the uh, file is empty, stabilized, uh, because the file is empty, it's just uh, code done running. Uh, if you have any exceptions, errors, you will also see them like this on the, on the screen. So I will now open it, make the font a bit bigger. I think this is this big enough. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, we don't need this. And uh, yeah, let's start coding. So we will need the stage library, which is the library I wrote for handling, uh, basically it handles sprites and tiled maps. Tiled, uh, I, I will explain this as we go. And we will need the UGame module, which comes together with the stage module. Uh, on most devices, it's already included. That's actually a file that is different on every device because it initializes the display and it uh, initializes the buttons. Because every device has the buttons on different pins and uh, connected differently and so on. There are differences between all those devices. I wanted something that will give a consistent uh, interface to the user. So, so we have that. And uh, we will need our level. It will be uh, uh, a stage. So the state library is called 
stage because it, it gives you the stage object. And stage object is something that uh, in game development usually is called the scene. So when you have a game, usually you have several scenes in it. The main menu at the beginning of the game may be one scene. A level that you play can be another scene. Then a high score uh, screen at the end can be another screen scene. Uh, basically, a scene is, is one uh, part of the game that has a certain uh, uh, behaviors implemented in it. It's convenient to, to divide them into separate objects because often they have completely different uh, behaviors. And uh, the state object will require a display. Uh, and it will require the uh, FPS that we want to use. And uh, a, a, a short note on FPS. Normally, like hardcore game, gamers want to have like 200 FPS on their computers. On a screen like this, where you have 160 by uh, 120 pixels, uh, it doesn't make sense to have a lot of uh, frames per second because the pixels are so big that in those 60 frames during the second, the, the, the image won't change at all because the, the object that is moving will still not leave the one pixel in which it is. So uh, we will use 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, a, that's actually a nice nice value because it also uh, matches a lot of music that exists. So your animations will be synchronized to, to music. So. Uh, and we will have a main loop. And in the main loop, we will need to wait to make sure that uh, the time for our frame uh, is coming, and uh, then we will do some things. I don't know what yet. Let's save and see what happens. Nothing happened. Why? Hmm. When in doubt, I will just I think there is something with USB on my computer, but uh... Let me start a Python console. Okay, it's actually running. Oh, right. It's not outputting anything because we didn't do anything yet. <laughs> That's a common mistake. Okay, so one uh, uh, thing we we that is special about this this console is that uh, it has actually actual display. So we want to display actual graphics on it, and uh, that means we need to draw that the graphics. So I took the liberty of already preparing that. So we have a, a what's called a spray sprite sheet. And uh, for stage, stage is very limited. It only handles uh, PNG images that are 16 colors. Uh, and uh, each sprite is 16 by 16, and there are 16 sprites in a sprite sheet. And that's all fixed. Uh, it's this way because of uh, then I could write very fast code to render this, because I can hard code everything. <laughs> This way, and also uh, one problem with the microcontrollers, uh, with with gaming on microcontrollers, is that okay, <laughs> we have ten minutes. 
uh, is that uh, you have very little memory. And with 16 colors, you can fit two pixels in one byte. So that's uh, pretty, pretty efficient. Uh, I hope I can at least display a sprite. So we want uh, tiles. We want to load uh, a bank from image. And uh, yeah, fab.png. Let's see if that works. Yeah, nothing changed. And then we will want a player sprite, let's say. That's stage right. That will use the bank we just created. It will use the forced uh, sprite from that sprite bank. And we will put it at nine by nine. And uh, then we need to define the layers. Layers are basically either a layer is a, either a sprite or a tile map. Uh, in this case, we will just put the player in there. And uh, before. And then we can uh, display it. I will display, I will render the whole screen. So render block uh, renders a rectangle on the screen of the actual graphics that is calculated. And something's wrong. Uh, Okay, let me just look at my previous. Hmm. Oh, it works. It took a, a, a moment to update. Yeah, my, my USB is misbehaving because I disconnected my laptop from the dock brutally in the morning. So we have we have a sprite uh, displayed. So uh, and now it's reloading because uh, the computer decided to write something to the USB drive. That happens sometimes. Uh, the thing is, uh, you can see the the area that was pink on the image is actually transparent in here. Uh, that's a conscious decision. I didn't want to mock with, you know, transparency in the images because different formats uh, treat that differently. And I just said, okay, this particular color, this this hardcore pink one, exactly magenta, is going to be transparent. Period. Uh, okay, what else we can do? We should have a, a level for our level. So let's take this stage thing and uh, make it a little bit more complex. So we will inherit from it. Mm, so that's stage, 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 uh, and uh, we will need in it, in it. And uh, we need to call the super init uh, with the tiles, the four, nine, nine. That's the same stuff we had in here. No, that's not it. Oh, with the display and, and uh, FPS. Yeah, I, I wrote it, but I don't remember. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> That's why you, you have to write documentation as you write the code, because otherwise you won't remember anymore. And then instead of doing level equals stage, we can do level equals level. Like this. And then we can put the player on the level 
like this. Put this here. Uh, and it should work exactly the same as it was. It seems to do that. Now, uh, let's have some uh, map to display uh, behind the sprite. So the way I like to do it uh, right now is quite a word because the word map is already taken in Python. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's uh, going to be our, the walls. Uh, this is uh, 160 by 120, so you can roughly fit 10 by 8 right on it. However, we want to have two more because we will have edges of the map. Uh, we will have walls there. This way we don't have to check the uh, coordinate every time uh, we do anything. We will just have this. Uh, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's called the sentinel uh, pattern. If you are into software patterns. Okay, so basically this is a tuple of strings and then we can do for y line in enumerate the world for x tile in enumerate line. And we can populate our map. So if tile equals x, you want to put a wall here. And if to, if it equals period, we want to do something else. Now we need the graphic for, for the time for the time up. Uh, yeah, I'm running out of time here. One minute. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I can quickly show you the finished thing. Because I have it saved here. Well finished, mostly finished. Uh, it looks like this. Now it's refreshing. Sorry. Okay, so you can see you have some animated sprites. Uh, you can walk around. You have uh, obscurity also, but uh, yeah, I didn't get it to get the dialogues. Uh, if you also, you know, get some dialogues and maybe some combat, you can have a role-playing game like that. Uh, that's it.